All right, here we have an HP laptop that came in for no power. Customer is not able to power the laptop on. He said at one point the laptop would freeze, but he came to a point where the laptop is not even powering on. He did mention that when he plugs the power cable, he does see the light on the side, and when he presses on the power button, the light on the power button does light up for about 10 seconds, and then it shuts back off. Let's take a look. If we plug the charging cable, we do see the light. So the charger is communicating with the motherboard. And if we press on the power button, we need to open the screen. If we press on the power button, look at this. We do see the light and nothing on the screen. The power button light will stay on for about maybe 10 seconds. Still nothing on the screen. And then the power button light went off. So what's causing the power button light to go off after 10 seconds? And what's causing the computer not to power on? It was working at some point, freezing, and then no power. Strange. We have the battery disconnected. The first thing I want to do is just quickly take a look at the power MOSFETs. It's not going to be a power MOSFET issue because we did see a light on the computer from the charger. And the button is turning on for about 10 seconds. So we know that we do not have a short on the MOSFETs, but I'm going to check them anyway. Right now, if you look here, we have the charging connector. It connects via this board, via this cable, all the way here. So the power MOSFETs must be here on this area of the board or on back of the board. If we do not find them here on this side of the board, then we have to remove the motherboard and look on the back. Some models, they place the MOSFETs in a whole different area. Meter in diode mode. And if we test this side of the MOSFET, we do see a voltage drop of 0 0.6 volts. And that's perfect. We do not have a short. Okay. What do we do next? What's next? Before we remove the motherboard, let's just do a quick visual inspection just to see if there's anything obvious. Liquid damage, corrosion, rust, blown component, discolored component. We're going to start all the way from here. Look at this. We do have a blown component. After two seconds of visual inspection, we see a blown component. And I do not even know what this component is. Probably some protection chip. Let's continue with visual inspection and see if there's anything obvious. That's probably what's causing the problem. If that chip is shorting out, it's going to cause the computer not to power on. But the customer said the computer was working, it was freezing, and then it stopped. So we'll see. That chip was probably failing, and now it just failed. That's possible. Or the freezing part could be a software issue also. I mean, nothing obvious, nothing else obvious on the side of the board. All right. What I want to do is look up this chip to see what it does. Okay. Let me quickly look this up online and see if we can find out what this chip is. C96CH. Right now, Google is showing TPD4E001 low capacitance for channel ESD protection for that chip. I do not know if that's the same one or not, but let's take a look at the data sheet. TPD4E001. Is this a six pin? Yeah, it's an ESD protection chip. And right now, based on the data sheet here, we should have ground on pin number three. That's it. So what happens if we measure the chip in diode mode and check for a short on the chip. We should read ground on only one pin, which is pin number three. We are reading a short here. We are reading a short here. So two pins are reading a short. 
three pins are reading a short and four pins are reading a short so we know that we have a problem with this chip it cannot be that four out of six pins are ground so we definitely know that the chip is not good based on the condition of the chip let's remove it okay honestly i do not want to apply hot air in this area because look at the battery connector right next to it if we apply hot air we're going to end up burning that plastic on the battery connector i do not want to do that so what we're going to do instead is use low melt solder we're going to remove the chip by using low melt solder the magic of low melt solder low melt solder comes in a tube like this six pieces and you can buy it off our website just log in to northridgefix.com click on shop and whatever we use here you can find on our site flux low melt solder the brush tweezers and everything else Fume extractor on. And just a tiny bit goes a long way. And let's also do this side. And look at that. Look at the magic of low melt solder. We do not have to use hot air, just no melt solder. Now the chip soldered itself back on because we kept it for too long, but that's okay. Just heat up the area and done. Right now I see a wire trace from here to here. I do not know what this is about. I'm gonna clean up. I mean, that's not right. That wire is not right. I do not know if that wire is part of the chip or what's going on. Oh, it's part of the pad. Yeah, we cannot, yeah. So those two are connecting to each other. I mean, I hope I got the right information about the chip. I just did a quick search and Google showed that information. Right on the left. And we have a short. Let's remove this diode. We still have some low melt solder on the soldering iron tip. Bye bye diode. And let me check, do we still have a short? And we do have a short. So the problem is not only the chip, not only the diode, but we have a short somewhere on the board. What we're gonna do now is inject voltage. And then we're gonna monitor the board under a thermal cam to see where that short is coming from. Right, so let's inject voltage at the shorted area of the diode. One, two, three. All right, and anything getting hot? I do not see anything obvious on this side of the board. It could be that something is getting hot on back of the board. So the board is out right here and Let's see. We're gonna inject one volt at the shorted area of the diode. Okay, right here. What's going on? We're not getting any amp draw. 
the motherboard was drawing four amps before now we get zero amp draw what the this is ground here okay and this one is we're not getting a short anymore let me measure in diode mode Now look at this, we're not getting a short anymore. 0 0.8 voltage drop. <laughs> 0 0.8 voltage drop, look at this. We removed the diode from here. And this is our positive side right here. And we are getting 0 0.8 voltage drop. Before, we measured for a short here. And this is ground. This is ground. So we don't have a short. One last thing I want to do is measure the pins of the chip in diode mode. I just want to see which pin is connecting to ground. Before we got four out of six that were short into ground. Right now we do not have a short here. We do not have a short here like before. We do have ground here. This one is either pin number two or pin number five and not pin number three as the data sheet showed. No ground, no ground, and no ground. All right. We have the same problem, although we do have an orange light now. Before, we were not getting that orange light, even with the battery plugged in. But if we do power it on, we do see the light. Fans are not spinning, and nothing on the screen still. We may have to have that chip in place in order for the laptop to work. So that's it. We're going to end the video right here. I'm going to order the chip. We're going to replace the diode, and I'll probably do a part two on this repair. From now until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.